Hey everybody, great to see you. My name is Mark Bowen. I'm Commissioner of the Department of Revenue Services. And we are so excited uh, this week because it is a sales tax-free week for clothing and athletic wear. I wanna thank Governor Lamont and his team for helping put this together. Uh, it's a real boon for both our retailers as well as our residents who get a break, uh, much needed break during this time of inflation and inflationary pressure. So we're excited about it. We're already seeing an uptick of people out in stores and uh, we certainly wanna encourage folks to go out there to get shopping. And uh, remember it's $100 or less and you can choose as many items as you want as long as it's below $100. With that, I'm gonna flip it over to uh, Tim Phelan from the Connecticut Retail uh, Merchants Association, Tim. Thank you, uh, Commissioner, and thank you, Governor Lamont, for inviting us today. We really appreciate it. As you know, the Connecticut Retail Merchants Association, we're a statewide group. We represent retailers all throughout Connecticut, and we're here today to, uh, to thank everybody for, for the support of creating another sales tax-free week. It's going to be a, a great benefit to consumers uh, in Connecticut. It's an opportunity uh, for some of our members, some of whom you'll speak to in a couple of minutes, to, for consumers to really uh, shop local again, to highlight uh, the great retailers that are located uh, throughout Connecticut. So whether it's taking advantage of the uh, sales tax free week on clothing and footwear, or just getting out and seeing uh, other great retailers and other great uh, stores uh, throughout uh, main streets and uh, in, inside Connecticut's malls, uh, we're great, Connecticut's a great place to do your shopping and, and events like the sales tax free week are, are great opportunities to highlight uh, all the great work that's done by uh, Connecticut retailers. And one of those Connecticut retailers and a member of our association who's really poised to uh, have a, a great sales tax free week is Stephanie Blousey from Fleet Feet. So I'm gonna hand it off to Steph and let her talk a little bit uh, about her store. Thanks. Hello everyone. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Governor Lamont. Um, we are super excited about this sales tax free holiday this week. Um, comes with perfect timing with uh, West Hartford School being on spring break. Um, anytime we see any type of a, a sales tax holiday, um, even if the sales tax exemption doesn't apply um, to the product that is being purchased, we always see an uptick in business. And sure enough, this morning, we had uh, lots of people waiting for us to open at 10 a.m. Um, so we're super excited for the buzz and the energy and great time to stock up on kids' products. Um, we do appreciate that uh, the exemption this week allows for track spikes and um, athletic equipment, uh, athletic footwear that is specific to um, a sport versus in the past, it's just been um, stuff that you could wear every day. Um, and being that we're in the middle of track season right now, we're excited that uh, the spikes can be excluded from or can count toward the tax freeze. So um, it's a great benefit um, to shop local. Um, from a locally owned small business, but also um, we're gonna hear from Ken, who's gonna talk to you about the mall. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm Ken Sturba, general manager of the Connecticut Post Mall. And we really do, we, we, we're so grateful, Governor Lamont, for having this tax-free week. Um, as Tim mentioned, it really helps our retailers out, but more importantly, it helps the, uh, the whole state of Connecticut and anyone that is uh, having some financial struggles during our rough economy we have right now. But we do, we have a lot to offer here. As I was walking the mall this morning, there's a lot more folks than we normally see on a Monday. And that's great to see. We typically see about a 20 to 25% uptick in traffic every year for um, the tax-free week in August. So we're grateful to have this this week. And it's again, so many great retailers we have here. Um, but don't forget, we also have about 30 to 40% of our stores are locally owned as well by mom and pops. And we want to support them in any way we can. And again, this is just a great way for us to hopefully put some money back in the, the pockets of the residents of Connecticut. So thank you again. All right, I think it's up to me. Um, <laughs> first of all, thank you guys and support your local retailers. Uh, it's really important. We've gone through a, a pretty complicated a couple of years um, with COVID and coming out of it now, and you got Ukraine and you got supply chain issues in China, you've got inflation. So we wanted to do everything we can to make sure our retailers or our malls um, are stay on their feet. I'm really glad to hear from Stephanie and Ken that you already see more traffic coming in. Um, I think that makes a big difference. And um, 
look, it's been tough. It's been tough on the consumer. Inflation is uh, is rough, and we're trying to do everything we can to make it a little bit easier. So here it is. It's a uh, sales tax free, all items up to $100. So Mark Bowden will not be able to get that new Hummer with a sales tax discount, but um, you can go you, any item you want up to $100. So go and buy more than one. I hope that makes a difference. You know, along the way, if you drive to, um, you know, the mall, uh, I want you to know the gas prices are down about 50 cents over the last a month. Uh, we've still got a way to go, still up a lot from a year ago, but down a lot over the last month. Some of that's related to the, uh, um, you know, cutting the uh, 25 cent tax cut on gasoline. Some of that's related to the price of oil coming down a little bit, uh, trying to make a difference. Or if you use public transportation to get to uh, the mall or to get to uh, Fleet Feet, um, you know, the bus service is free for another few months. So it ought to be easier for you to get to the store to take advantage um, of this sales tax holiday. I hope that makes a big difference. Um, we always trying to find ways to make it easier. Um, there's always an appetite to try and do more, uh, but I wanna make sure we stay within our um, budget parameters. We have a good, honestly balanced budget going forward. There's a tendency to fly too close to the sun and uh, you know, lead to deficits in the out years. I can tell you Mark Bowden's not gonna let that happen. But most importantly, we get this economy growing, starting with our amazing retail sector. We work with so closely over the last two years trying to get a little, little boost. So go support your local retailer. Okay, thank you very much. If anyone has questions on, we'd like to start on topic if possible. Uh, so if you have a question or two, please uh, use the hand raise function. Uh, that would be great. We will start with uh, Governor Lamont's best friend from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Tony Terzi. <laughs> thank you, Governor, uh, and good morning to you all. Here's hoping business is great for you this week. Um, can you tell us how it was determined what items would qualify for the under $100 uh, crowd in terms of tax-free? Because there, there is a little bit of a difference from past tax-free weeks, correct? Got that, Mark? Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely right. This. Um, Tax-free week includes athletic items. So if any any item that's related that you wear, uh, you, you know, spikes, shoes, running shoes, as mentioned earlier, as well as uniforms, things like that are, are tax-free. Um, and that was something that was important to members of the legislature and to the governor. You know, spring season's coming up for a lot of these kids, whether they participate in extracurriculars at school or whether they're in a, a little league uh, league or anything like that. So um, we want to make it a little easier for parents to be able to participate in this stuff. And, and our little contribution is to, to go easy on the tax. And uh, uh, that's why we did that. And that was the feeling of the legislature. Thank you, Commissioner. We'll go next to Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Uh, yeah, a question for the panel. Um, approximately how much was saved by taxpayers in 2021 and do we anticipate the same type of numbers in April compared to August when it's more traditional back to school shopping? Uh, Governor, I'll take this. We, uh, it costs us about four, I, I look at it as a cost as a savings for our taxpayers, but I'm always thinking about the budget. So it costs us about four, $4 million per week to do this. Uh, I expect maybe a little bit higher. I think there's a little more demand out there right now. And I think the sports, because the category has been widening me at a little bit more. So I'm figuring about 4.1, 4.2 million dollars. Listen, it's a chip, uh, you know, a, a drop in the bucket for some folks, but it really means a lot statewide to those people that are out there struggling, especially with all the inflationary pressures that are going on right now. Got it. And, and my final one, if I may, just for Governor Lamont, just wanted to see how you're feeling. How was your weekend? Oh, thank you. I'm feeling um, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I tested negative today, which was great. Um, I've been here in quarantine in this uh, nice place by myself for the last uh, few days um, and uh, ready to get out and uh, see people again. Thank you very much. We'll go next to Paul Hughes. Or we'll come back to Paul. Ken Dixon. Oh, oh, thanks, uh, thanks, Max. Um, 
Hey, Tim, how many members are in the association, please? We, we represent about 15 to 1,600 retailers throughout Connecticut. Thanks. And um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not afraid to reveal my ignorance. Stephanie, if I walk in and I look at a pair of $180 soccer shoes and want to walk out with them, what happens? I get, I get pay the tax on the 80 no, you pay the tax on the full 180. So it's not the first 100 is tax free. It's the item has to be priced under $100. Okay, thanks. Um, Max, can I come back uh, and ask some off topic stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll go next to Christine Stewart. Hey guys, thank you. This is for the retailers. Um, how easy was it um, to it, implement the, the sales tax-free uh, week in your system and did you have enough notice? If I can start. Um, I think we had plenty of notice. Um, it does take a little bit of effort to um, code in the, the tax-free items into our POS system, um, but it's something that we can do ahead of time and set a start and an end date. So. Um, my sister who co-owns those store with me and handles all of our uh, back-end systems was able to do that last week. Um, it did catch us a little off guard. Um, I was reading the rule on Saturday night um, as I was composing an email to my customer base and that's when I noticed that the um, athletic equipment, um, athletic footwear was, um, sports specific footwear was still, uh, was added to the list. So um, that was a big benefit. I will say it's been um, a lot of customers don't know about it yet. Um, even some local news organizations, uh, including one called weha.com, which is kind of uh, the end all be all here in West Hartford. Um, usually in her business buzz on Monday morning, she would promote something like this, but I don't think she realized that this was going on. So um, everyone's used to the back to school tax free week. And just from um, our standpoint, that is our busiest week of the year. So we're hoping that uh, this week kind of adds to that and gives us a, a nice big bump in business. Uh, that said, you know, we wish it was just a little bit higher, maybe 150 um, <laughs> since uh, kid shoes are all under a hundred dollars, but um, you know, our, our sweet spot of our customer is like a 40 to 80 year old and uh, they love to save as well. And it's funny because if we offered 10% off the store, nobody would show up. But for some reason, uh, when you say it's tax free week, people come out of the woodwork. Um, could the state have done a better job of promoting this? Um, I think the state did well enough by, you know, because we were able to um, learn about it. Um, I think it was just a matter of messaging out to the general public, which is my responsibility. It's your responsibility. Um, we need to reach out to consumers to, to let them know about it. Um, so I think it's great that it happened, but uh, maybe if we made it every year during spring break, that uh, might help with uh, more people learning about it and expecting it. But Thank it's you. a nice surprise. Christine, I, I just add that we, we do appreciate the governor's office and the uh, legislative leaders reaching out to us to uh, sort of let us know that they were thinking of doing this and asking, um, you know, how much lead time do you need and trying to trying to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, small business owners had to make some adjustments to their systems. So, you know, both the, the legislature and the governor's office, um, knowing that they wanted to do this, it was a it was a sort of a, a sense that they wanted to do something for consumers reached out and said, you know, what, what what's going to help your retailers. And so, you know, as Stephanie said, I think, you know, um, the time frames work for us and the fact that it's lined up during the majority of school break for uh, students um, is great. And, and I might I might just add, Governor, we're going to add Stephanie as a registered lobbyist so that she can help us increase the threshold amounts for next year to $150. So uh, we like that. Thank Kim, you. That's one plan. Another plan, Stephanie, as we said, is why don't you sell the left shoe separately from the right shoe? I don't know. <laughs> Mark, does, Mark doesn't idea. like that. <laughs> you all knew that I needed a new pair of running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I we can go back to Tony if you'd like, and then we're gonna, then we'll take off topics. Tony, are you, are you on topic or is something else? Um, if I could do one on and then one off, is that okay, Max? Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. How about okay. this? Do the one on, and then I just want to do a kind of a reset at the end. Do you want me to ask Paul Hughes's question? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. Okay, so uh, Governor uh, Paul Hughes, who is having some technical difficulties, wrote in. Uh, he wanted to ask about the sales tax cut. He says, Senate Republicans have proposed to suspend for the rest of 2022. There's also been a call to cut the sales tax rate. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And also about ARPA rules. Uh, would ARPA rules permit a suspension or a rate cut? So it's two prong there. Yes, I think uh, the Republicans have um, suggested a half a percent cut. Um, ARPA rules, you know, would permit that, but we wouldn't, we'd have to take away another tax cut under those same ARPA rules. So uh, if they want to suggest uh, doing a half a point on sales tax and don't do um, ending the income tax on um, pensions, uh, you know, we have to do a trade off. Those are what the rules are, Tony and okay. Paul. Okay. Um, off topic. Governor, you know, obviously the two most high profile uh, leaders, political leaders in our state have contracted COVID in the last uh, couple of, you know, last several days. Uh, hopefully the Lieutenant Governor is doing as well as you are, but that raises some concerns in the public's eyes. Are, are we as citizens, residents taking COVID serious enough? Um, what is the state doing to try to get more messaging out there? Something along those lines, Governor. Yeah, that's a fair question. Um, and yes, uh, Susan was um, not happy with the fact that she had tested positive uh, first thing this morning. Look, there's community spread out there. And there's community spread, especially um, uh, among folks who haven't been in infected before. And uh, I think you see that here. I think you see what happened down in Washington, D.C. I think you've seen that all over this region right now. Uh, that said, you know, we're vaccinated, we're not going to a hospital, five days of quarantine, you know, get back in the game. I think we know now how to live with this and live with this safely. And uh, talking to Scott Gottlieb and others, I think this is going to be like this. I, I hope we're done with this in the next month or so, but time will tell. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the other question... I just want to read Paul Hughes's longer question. Um, Senate Republicans did propose to suspend for the rest of 22 the sales tax. Um, and there's also been a call to cut the overall sales tax rate. So number one, how do you feel about that? And the second one is, what can you and Commissioner Bouton say regarding the ARPA rules regarding a suspension or a rate cut? Yeah, I think I tried to answer it. You want to try a different take on it, Mark? Sure. Um, ARPA rules are, and the Treasury rules are very clear, um, that we have about a 1% window of organic growth that we can cut out of our budget. So that equates, and it depends, on, it is a moving target, but it's around 240, 250, 230, depending on what week you're looking at and depending on where our revenues are going. That's the amount of money we have to play with. Now, how you divide that up and where you divide that up, that's a subject of negotiations between the legislature and uh, the governor's office. But at the end of the day, you can't exceed that. And if you exceed that in cuts, you're gonna have to pay it back to the, to the feds once they come in and do their audit. Now, nationally, they're out looking at this very closely and they, don't, they didn't give us ARPA money to go and cut taxes. They gave us ARPA money to help recover from the impact of the pandemic. So it'll be difficult for us to, to go beyond that. And as the governor mentioned, there'll be trade-offs. Sure, you can pretty much cut whatever you want, but you've got to stay within that window uh, to be able to uh, keep within the treasury rule. So it's it's real, it's it's not a joke, it's serious. And it was a big part of our discussion during deliberations uh, with myself, the governor and uh, our budget director about you know what we can do here. We, we would love to have as many tax cuts as possible, but the reality is we also don't want to set us up in the future to have to go back and raise taxes because we don't know what the future holds. As the governor mentioned earlier, it's a very unstable environment out there right now, and we've got to be prudent. We've got to be uh, reassured to the public, and we certainly have to be thoughtful about how we go about this. So 
I think it's the right play and it's the right way to do it. And certainly, again, it's all how you divide it up, but it's, it has to stay at around 240, 250. We'll go next to John Craven. Governor, you do sound like you're uh, feeling a little better today, so we're glad to hear that. Uh, you said that uh, you're ready to get out and see people again. When do you plan to start making public appearances again? Oh, probably in the next couple of days, I'd have to say, John. Um, you know, obviously outdoors is a lot easier than indoors. Um, you know, CDC has suggested that if you're indoors with a, um, a lot of people in relatively close contact, probably a good thing for somebody who's been previously infected um, to wear the mask for another five days or so. So uh, that's sort of our time frame. That was going to be my follow-up question. You know, I mean, we, we've seen you at a lot of events indoors without a mask on, you know, given what happened at the Gridiron Dinner in D.C., you know, that we've seen an uptick in cases um, I mean, do you think that maybe you'll you'll change that and, you know, mask up indoors at least for the next little while? Yeah, let me let me think about that. I mean, obviously, if you're in close contact with people, I think uh, the rule is clear. If I'm standing in front of a group with a little bit of distance, I maybe don't have to wear the mask. Um, but I think your basic point uh, holds true. It's probably good to be a little cautious uh, over the next few weeks until we get through this, um, hope, hopefully a mini wave. So does that mean we should expect to see you masked up indoors at least for a few weeks? Depending on how close the contact is, I think so. I don't know about the few weeks, but yeah. Let, let me ask you real quick. I know you guys were doing contact tracing. Um, have any of your staff or anyone you came in contact with in the last few days, did any of them come back positive? Not that I know of. Hey, thanks, Governor. Susan, Susan tested positive. I think I saw her last Thursday or something. Are, are you guys thinking that that may be where she picked it up? Uh, you know, John, I, I think there's a lot of community spread right now. So, um, trying to figure out exactly where you picked it. Where did I pick it up? I don't know. I went to a basketball game. I saw um, hundreds of people there. We um, There was a reception afterwards. It's pretty tough to say um, when there's this much community spread where you got it. It's easier to say uh, if you get it, test until you uh, test uh, negative and uh, quarantine. And then once you've tested negative, you've done your quarantine, start going back about your life. But it, and again, as far as you guys know, no one that you came in contact with except potentially Lieutenant Governor, we don't know for sure, um, hasn't tested positive. Yeah, I, I think the only person who sees as many people over the course of a week than I do is uh, Susan Beiswitz. So tough to say where it came from. All right. Thanks, Governor. Glad you're feeling better. Thanks, John. We'll go next to Ken Dixon. Thanks, Max. Um, so, Governor, how did you, what were the symptoms, uh, the arc of symptoms you had over the weekend? You sound better now than on Friday. Yeah, that first day I really had no symptoms and a uh, little taken by surprise when I got the, uh, the positive test. Um, next day, maybe a little um, slight headache. I think you remember um, my voice was going a little bit hoarse there. Um, and I, you know, tested every day since. Um, you know, today I think I'm 98%. Some of you may doubt that. <laughs> Uh, we could take a vote in the press room right now, Governor, if you want. <laughs> Just me and Paul. Um, and so it, you had uh, left the option open of treatment. Uh, did you did you seek treatment or? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, Plex Ovid is that it from Pfizer. I started taking that um, once I started having symptoms on Friday afternoon. Are you still on it? Yes. Well, what's the, that's, I, I'm not going to get into your medical, uh, your medical prescription. I, I have no side effects, um, and I'd like to think it's working. Um, thanks. Um, Governor, um, with all the, um, uh, the openings in the under ticket, it seems like the Democratic is going to be a lot more interesting than what's going on this year. Um, how are you, fig how, how are you feeling about, um, Talking to people about um, going getting that I think I got about a third of that, Ken. Um, uh, but I think it was about all the openings on the under ticket. Um, 
Look, I, I've talked to a, a lot of the different players, um, you know, encouraging them along. We've got a, a convention coming up, uh, urge them to get out and make their case, talk to all the, um, you know, delegates that they can. I think uh, the convention is going to do a good job of sorting out the group, um, look at their qualifications, um, look at how hard they've been working at it, um, you know, think about diversity on the ticket. I think uh, delegates will be able to do the right thing. Thank you. All right, no more questions. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Christine, go ahead. Um, yeah, Governor, um, since uh, Friday, Dita Bargava has asked um, that she's uh, entering the, the race for state treasurer. What do you think about her and her qualifications? I think she's highly qualified. I've known her for years. Um, I know she ran last time, wrote a, ran a really spirited campaign. And, um, uh, you know, I think it's great that she's getting into the race. Um, but she won't be the other only one. I, I, I know for sure that there'll be a, a really good uh, group of folks uh, in the race for treasurer. Okay. And I mean, does that leave you guys with enough time to to get a candidate, uh, you know, up and running and and raising the money that they need to raise to um, to get between the convention and the primary? Yes, I think it does. From a personal point of view, I think these campaigns go on forever. Uh, I think the treasurer candidates are lucky that um, they got 30 days to the convention. Now get to work. Thank you. All right, no more questions. Thank you, Max. Nice to see you guys. Thanks for your help. Thanks, Governor. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you again, Commissioner.